everyone, welcome to myself, Max McGillivray from Beanstalk. Agri Leadership Week, 17th to 21st of May, 2021. Why are we hosting a broadcast about Agri Leadership Week? Um, my daughter, uh, um, she's doing uh, A-level psychology and so she pinged me down, pinged me down last night um, because uh, in her um, uh, learnings at the moment, she's been set this uh, particular uh, conundrum. What is leadership and can leadership be taught? You look at leadership within agribusiness, uh, fresh produce within within the UK and also internationally. And there's a there's a, a very well known uh, slide stat by uh, Cranford University that the companies that invest in the staff in terms of learning, training, and development see far better returns in profitability and turnover. But are we excelling at this, especially with everything that's gone on in the in the last year in the respects of the pandemic? I don't think so. And that's why there's been a new cross organizational campaign taking place in May, 17th, 21st of May, to raise awareness of leadership training across the agricultural career spectrum. So hashtag Agri Leadership Week is a joint scheme by AHDB, Nuffield Farming Scholarship Trust, Institute for Agricultural Management, the Worshipful Company of Farmers, and the Farmers Club Charitable Trust. We've got a number of experts from those organizations in today to talk to us about it so we can learn more on that. Could everyone come in? So whilst everyone's um, coming in, the um, Agri Leadership Week is gonna target current and aspiring leaders within agriculture who are unaware of or are yet to make use of any leadership training. Through the campaign, it's hoped people will become more aware of training that can not only improve them as a person, but as an employer in charge of others. The campaign also wants to tackle the lack of formal education in the UK when compared to international partners. Only one in three agricultural workers in Britain have completed any form of proper training and schooling compared with say seven and 10 in both the Netherlands and, uh, and Germany. So it's a, it's a fairly horrific um, statistic when you look at that. And if there's one thing that we all are going to need when we're working through this pandemic is leadership, leadership, especially in agriculture, when what are we looking to do? We're looking to feed the nation. So let's just run through our um, our experts to see who we've got on board. So Isaac, who are you please and who are you representing? Thank you, Max, and thank you for having me. What an exciting collaboration to be part of. So uh, our very first ever Agri-Leadership Week. So thank you very much. Uh, my name is Isaac van Heerden, and I lead for AHDB on our AgriLeader program. Um, like myself, it originated in the dairy industry, started off as the Dairy Leader program, really aimed to deliver to those levy payers that are technically very proficient already, but they could use some support um, on leadership, management, motivation, recruitment, that types of area. So that's, that's where it came from where it's come from uh, and about 12 months ago. So we started moving across to AgriLeader across all of the sectors. Uh, prior to that, I lectured on courses for Plumpton uh, College and University of Brighton. Uh, and before that, I milked and managed cows. And originally I'm uh, from the reigning Rugby World Cup champions uh, neck of the woods. <laughs> Yes, and that's a conversation for another time. I just love the, the fact that uh, um, for the Lions, you, you're going to get us to play in uh, in Joburg at altitude. So I think it's only fair that your <laughs> South African brethren wear uh, lead suits just to, just to give us a hand. And it's, Isaac, it's fantastic that, uh, that you went to Plumpton. I, I grew up in that area. What a gorgeous area you're, you're in. Christine, who are you, please? And who are you representing? Not trying to make it sound like Eurovision, but who yeah. are you, please? Uh I'm, I'm here as the chair of MDS, which is a graduate recruitment and training business. And uh, we've currently got uh, 70 trainees working for us on a two year program and about 60 members. Um, I'm also a trustee of the Farmers Club Charitable Trust, but Lisa's gonna tell you about that in a minute. Uh, fantastic, and, and let's just, uh, I, I know we will a little, little bit later, but MDS, MDS in, in my tenure, so as a, as a sideline, I, I, I run a recruitment business called Red Fox. That by far the better people we see in, in fresh produce, especially, have come through the MDS training scheme. Um, I did a session with the Harper students um, uh, last week. And one thing I was looking to extol was the virtues of the, of the MDS scheme. So if you're a student watching this, please look at the MDS scheme. Uh, because what do you reckon, Christine? It's brilliant. There's no other word for it, really. It's fantastic. And it, it doesn't matter what you've studied at university. We've got people with bioarchaeology degrees, maths degrees, chemistry degrees, languages, geography. And it's just a great way of getting into the food industry, understanding different roles 
and uh, deciding what, what suits you. But throughout the whole of that, we do a level five apprenticeship training on management and leadership. Boom, excellent. Lisa, who are you please and who are you representing? Right, okay, my name's Lisa Turner and I'm representing the Farmers Club Charitable Trust. Um, I'm contracted as the awards ambassador for the trust um, and the trust um, has charitable objectives to provide grants and bursaries, bursaries um, through their agricultural educator awards, um, mainly to agricultural um, lecturers in colleges and universities. And they also offer sponsorship to individuals wishing to take up um, the Windsor Leadership Trust training programmes. Fantastic. Thank, thank you, Lisa. Robert, in, uh, where's Robert? Robert. Hello. Who are you please and who are you representing? Well, I'm, of course, director of the Institute of Agricultural Managers uh, Leadership Development Programme alongside Professor Wynne Jones and Louise Manning. Uh, it's a three-week programme split between Sirencester, Westminster and Brussels. Wow. And it's, it's designed for delegates who are well on their leadership journey. Uh, it's more leadership development or acceleration rather than a programme just about the theory of leadership. Excellent. Robert, thank you very much. Um, Karen, you're now becoming a, a regular on our, on our broadcast. You did a fantastic session with Christine for Women and Food and Farming with us uh, recently um, about the Worshipful Company of Farmers. Oh, I've already introduced you. Over to you. Introduce yourself again, please. Oh, thank you very much. So I'm with the Worshipful Company of Farmers and I had the great pleasure of chairing the Education Committee for several years. And we've got two fabulous courses, the Challenge of Rural Leadership, which is based down in Devon and run by Richard So an advanced course in agricultural business management, which is run by Keith Barrable. We also support people doing Cranfield courses, uh, an MBA or the business, uh, pro pro business growth programme. And we also support Nuffield. So we're very involved with leadership and management for the next generation going forward. And, and uh, Christine, it's fascinating with the broadcast that we did for Women in Food and Farming with Karen. I don't know about you, but the response I got after the broadcast was that everyone was so wowed uh, by what Karen was saying and and the course and the and the fundamental changes that it made to to people. Uh, we had three uh, past participants do short videos for us that we ran as part of that uh, broadcast. Um, if you, if you want to see it, just get in contact with me or just Google Beanstalk Global uh, Karen Mercer and uh, you, you'll be able, able to see it. Um, so what do you reckon, Christine? That that was a fantastic course that uh, that Karen was promoting. Yes, and I thought it was it was great that the three people who just did their little one minute videos. So if nothing else, just watch those one minute videos talking about the impact that the courses had had on them. And they think they were very honest yeah. and talking, you know, some of them actually did the course when they were when they were at a very uncertain point of their lives and found that the leadership course was absolutely massively influential in helping them change path. Christine, thank you, Karen. Thank you. So I hope you're getting the theme of this leadership. Christoph, over to you, please. In beautiful Norfolk, who are you and who are you representing? Yes, fine. I'm, I'm Chris Grote and I'm the uh, chairman of the Nuffield Farming Scholarships Trust. Our trust was founded by a donation of Lord Nuffield in 1947 and has awarded over a thousand scholarships since then. And the background to this was that in 1913, William Morris, later to become Lord Nuffield, sailed to the US and learned in Detroit how Henry Ford was mass assembling motor cars. On his return, he introduced technology to the UK and revolutionized British car making, as we all know. This is the spirit on which our scholarships are built. It's a journey of discovery and an investment in yourself. Our scholars build knowledge through global experience, share brilliant ideas, make things happen, develop into tomorrow's leaders and inspire commitment. Enough of scholarship sponsors eight to 10 weeks of international travel and training on the subject chosen by the scholar himself, aged between 25 and 45, with at least two years of post-professional educational experience can apply. The Trust's vision is to inspire passion in people and develop their potential to lead positive change in agriculture. And enough of scholarship is for life. We have an active alumni, a great conference, and many regional events. I did my Nuffield scholarship in 1990, spending 10 weeks traveling Central and Eastern Europe. The wall had just come down and I studied whether there were development opportunities for British farming know-how. It was a life-changing experience. My outlook on life matured 
and the many friends I made along the way still enrich me every day. I learned much about the value of the simple things in life, true friendship, trust, honesty, and hospitality. With some of those friends, we built an 85,000 hectare business in five European countries over the next 25 years. It's now owned by an international agribusiness fund. I've retired from farming and I'm back with Nuffield. Thank you. Chris, that's fantastic. I, I was very blessed to attend a couple of the conferences um, over the years. And uh, my best man is a Nuffield scholar. And to my godparents, to, to various of uh, various mem best members of my kids, various, various of my kids are also um, scholars. So I've, I've seen this all the way through. Do you, Chris, do you think I'm too old to become a Nuffield scholar now? Because I, I, I want to know what you know. Well, do you, you, do you look 45? No, of course not. You give me a try. <laughs> but, but but Chris Chris it's, it's just a bit like um, um MDS and uh, with with uh, with Karen uh, with the Westfield Company of Farmers there's so many schemes so many there's there's a there's a defined number of niche schemes that um, have got such proven worth within agriculture I don't know in some ways I'm so proud to be associated with the sector because of these schemes and the difference that that um, that they're making but we need to go to this next step hence why the the creation of the Agri Leadership Week for the 17th, 21st of, of May. So let, let's, um, thank you everyone. Let, let's get on with this. Um, Isaac, are you ready? Um, if everyone else could turn off their videos and, um, and their audio. Um, so what Isaac has, um, has uh, prepared for us today is uh, um, some, some uh, slides on, well, Isaac, you, you present it, because I've, I've been very privy to see the, the inside line of this, but it'd be excellent for everyone to hear more about it, please. Okay, I'm just um, hoping I'm sharing now. Yep, got it. Excellent. Um, yes, so very, very excited to share a bit of research with you that, that um, we've commissioned. And actually, it's so hot of the press, I'm hoping to sign it off this week. So, um, and it will be, be launching it you know, as soon as we've got it um, signed off. Uh, it's called the AgriLeader Bridging the Gap 2030 Report. And although it says AgriLeader, you know, which is our certain AHDB offer, actually the report looks at you know, what all of us operating in this area can do and, and you know, some improve on and work together going forward. Uh, it was done on, on uh, behalf of AHDB by Promar, so thanks for, for them for doing that. And, um, you know, so it's really a really good piece of work, we believe. Um, so first of all, so has the slides moved on there? Uh, there we go. It has, well done. And um, so we're trying to answer basically these 10 questions and we won't have time to today to go through all of these, but um, I'll highlight some of the areas that stood out and, and that we think, you know, some of the of the main areas. Um, things like how much leadership and management, you know, development, or I'll call it LMD from here, otherwise I'll be spending all my days saying send uh, LMD, send out. So, so how much of LMD is currently happening in the in the industry? What are the greatest challenges for the future leaders, farmer uh, leaders and managers? Uh, is, it, is the future leader really going to have to be that different from what we have today? Uh, what are the mindset, the traits, the skills that these guys and girls in the future are going to need? And look at some recommendations and contents uh, for delivery. Um, so first of all, so we, we try to look a bit at some defining uh, leadership and management, but actually so to put a definitive definition on what leadership or management is would be an absolutely folly. If you, if you Google uh, leadership and management, there are thousands of definitions and descriptions. Um, I quite like this one by O'Keefe there. Um, a leader is a future shaper. They convert the preferable to the predictable. So I, I quite like that. But something that also became very, very clear is that and you, can't be, uh, you can't lead without managing and you can't manage without leading. The two are so integral. So don't try and do both at the same time, maybe, but so you definitely need, to, need uh, both skills to, to uh, be a good leader and a good manager. Uh, at AgriLeader, for some time now, we've um, adopted this approach, uh, first described by someone called Kufenblatt in their research as a three-legged milking stool, uh, which I quite, quite like of uh, leadership and management uh, based around so leading myself, leading others and leading my business. And I think that the people that are really good leaders and managers, they manage to balance those three aspects of, of it and very well um, through, through what they do on a daily basis. So the first bit that, that we'll look at is um, how much uh, LMD is currently undertaken. And let me just say, um, 
you know, this this report was never the intention was never to be a catalog of everything that's done in the agriculture and horticulture LMD arena. Um, we didn't have the budget or the time to do that. So we focused a bit more maybe on the CPD type element of, of leadership and management development. So, yeah, we appreciate there are um, bits that we've missed. Um, people do a lot of this maybe on their own, do modules uh, online on their own. Um, there, there are some very good work being done by land crown colleges that we haven't captured here. Um, but I think so we, we've done a fairly good job of capturing sort of the uh, uh, LMD that's specifically sent, done sent, uh, um, as, as CPD going forward. And I think some, what's what's we've I've highlighted in red there is a really scary stat. So if we take there's about 220,000 holdings throughout the UK, there's less than 900 uh, people every year that go through all of these various different schemes and programs. And you can see we've we've captured you know a, a big majority of them there. And even if we were out by you know a, a factor of 100, which I don't think we were, that would still be less than one percent of people that actually do this training. So yeah, you know, so I think there's scope for a lot more. Um, the next bit that I thought so we, we should maybe just um, uh, dwell on very quickly is what are the uh, future challenges and, and yes, opportunities that um, you know, our future leaders and managers are gonna face these mega trends. Um, I won't dwell because you know, there's no big surprises, but worth reaffirming. Technology and digitization is gonna play an ever more important role. The population and the food demand is, is going to keep on uh, increasing. We're already operating in different marketplaces, so that's going to be um, you know, just get get volatility is going to get more. Uh, future support payments uh, are going to change. Um, we've got the concerned consumer now, so people want to know where their food comes from, know it's safe, and very much tied in with that is this whole information. You know, what is fact and what is fake, and what do we as an industry uh, need to get out there and make sure so that we sell ourselves as the trusted uh, industry where their food comes from. Obviously, in the environment and how we send, um, you know, send, uh, uh, adapt to that and challenge going forward is going to be very important. But then also the workforce, the future workforce are going to be send, need to be much more diverse and how we. The skills people are going to need um, and, and be able to do, but also the, the, the leaders and, and the farm owners themselves, um, you know, the leaders of those businesses are going to have to be very different skill sets that they, they need to do. Um, so, so now I guess this is sort of the more meaty part. So we then looked at what evidence is there to show which skills, traits, competencies are the most likely to affect farm performance. Um, and we really try to narrow it down to those things that will actually make a difference uh, and helping farmers and, and growers thrive in the future. And I think some, you know, the, the two bigger less would just get lost. So we'd really try to narrow it down. Um, you'll see we grouped them under the sort of three areas of, of leading myself, leading others and, and leading the business. But of course, there's massive overlaps between, between all of those. The first one we think, and um, you know, the report shows is really important, is a growth mindset, being able to adapt and so look at opportunities, look at challenges and, and really adapt. The second one being resilience and you know, the, the ag and, and the fresh food and produce industry has really shown they are very resilient. So um, that is going to stay important. Inspirational leadership is going to become even more important. Um, some more bigger businesses and really being able to send the, whether it's the people that work for you or the wider team really get them to share your vision for your business um, is going to be important really good solid decision makings and you know looking at the facts know what what uh, my attitude to risk is and make good decisions are going to be some very important these last two is something that actually come out that, that maybe isn't currently covered in, in uh, LMD very much. And that's that entrepreneurial and profit focused mindset. And maybe it's because we think that, that people that come on these courses are already or programs are already quite uh, that way inclined, but also that detail consciousness. You know, so attention to detail is very important. And should that be, especially those last two be part of, of uh, leadership and management development training. Um, so the next thing we, if we looked at and are, are the future leaders and managers going to be that different? What's going to stay the same and what's going to change? Um, 
things like there's still going to be a lot of small family businesses are going to are going to be part of the future that and work life balance and and you know you live where you work or you work where you live kind of um, aspect is always going to be there succession challenges are always going to be there but in the future there's quite a few things that we think are going to change some slightly some quite drastically um, there's probably going to be some more uh, bigger farms and, and businesses um, the impact of the leaders and the managers in those businesses are going to be increasingly important so getting people to pull in the same way uh, going forwards and working as a team are going to change the pace of change will definitely uh, uh, increase uh, we're going to have to be much more adaptable uh, farmers, growers are going to have to be much more aware of their ethical and, and environmental responsibilities and, and you know, the consumer are going to look in on that. And some, the future successful businesses are probably going to have to be a bit more comfortable with uncertainty and volatility. Um, so a very quick run through of some of the main areas, but some of the recommendations and conclusions that came out of there. So how do we send, increase uh, leadership management development? Uh, and some, you know, the, the effects that they will have. We need to make it more normal. Um, every, everybody should have access to it and have the opportunity to do it. We can do that by making it more access, uh, accessible and so move to a blended approach. You know, this uh, uh, pandemic has taught us a lot of lessons on how we can do a lot more of that online. So I think that, that needs to, those lessons need to be taken forward. Definitely need to address the diversity issues. There's so much talent out there that so we uh, potentially don't tap into. We need to make it more relevant to smaller family owned farms. I think some people are put off by the fact that they think it's all about staff management and I don't have staff. So, so make it more relevant to, to the whole of the, of the spectrum of business out there. Keep it practical. So, so what is actually gonna make you know, some, a change on how I some, manage my business going forward. So make it really practical. Probably some focus on the audiences who want to learn. So let's work with, with those people. And, and let's use all of the of the arm, uh, tools in our armories and the studies, the stories, the podcasts, the ambassadors to m really get this message out there. And I really like this quote um, as of you don't need to, uh, a title to be a leader. Thank you, Max. That was a very quick run through. I think that, that was brilliant. And all credit, credit to you, to your AHDB uh, colleagues and also to Promar uh, for coming up with such a research study in, in my uh, oh, Isaac, can you just um, uh, stop your screen sharing? Um, in in my, my tenure of, um, of training, I've always been taught that we're, we're basically in business for, for two reasons, uh, to, um, to, to have fun, to, to enjoy what you're doing, and also to make money, to make, uh, to make profit. Um, and on, on that side, Isaac, is there a link between leadership and management development and profit on farm, farm performance, do you think? Uh, definitely. So, so that's the question. I'm just trying to work out how to work this thing to turn it off. So, <laughs> Stop so, sharing my screen. So ah, there we go. You. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much. They're, they're definitely, that is a, quite a big part of, of what the um, report looks at is that, you know, what are the traits that, that makes a difference? Are those traits actually, um, you know, teachable? Can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Excellent. Are those traits teachable and can people learn to do them and do they affect them? So, so there are definitely a link, um, quite weak research in the area, especially in agriculture, because it is so difficult to show that, you know, we went on a course here and this was the return on the investment. So it's, it's quite a different, uh, a difficult area to show. And it's something that we'll be looking uh, into a bit more in the future. Uh, but yes, there, there definitely is uh, a link between I, I fantastic. Christine, could you come in, please? Hi. Chris, excellent. And, and um, Isaac, thank you very much. Isaac, if you could just turn off your um, your, your video, that'd be brilliant. And uh, Christine, just so you're aware, you've got, got a little bit of background noise in the background. It, it sounds like uh, Mr. T is, uh, is, uh, is on the go with the strimmer. But uh, that's it. Well done. Fantastic. Um, Christine, with, with that masterclass from, from Isaac and, and everything that we know about all of these courses, it, it might be might be a bit of an oblique question, but why hasn't the likes of MDS, Nuffield been more successful, especially towards targeted towards these smaller farmers? What, why has the Agri Leadership Week um, have to be created? I think there's, there's partly, and it was interesting, one of the videos that we had um, last week when we were talking about the Worshipful Company of Farmers, 
is is um, Alice and Tia who were saying, well, you know, I, I'm only on a small family farm, you know, what's leadership got to do with me? And I think that a lot of people think leadership isn't for them, but actually the training is all about how you think about your business and how you manage yourself. And if you do have employees, how you work with them, but how you interact with other people in the industry, how you learn, how you do continual professional development. So I, I think I would just say leadership's for everybody. And you know, we at MDS are recruiting people from university and you know generally their leadership they may be talking about a, you know a, a dodgeball team that they played in or or a small society that they got involved with but we're looking for examples and demonstration of leadership potential and then we take those people and we put them through four jobs in four different businesses and train them the whole way through so that by the end of two years they are bright and ready to go into the food industry and, and do other things. And generally, an awful lot of the people that come to MDS, when we're looking, asking them why they apply, that's because they don't really know what they want to do. And because we're showing them what is the industry from growers through to retailers. Yeah, well done. Um, I was uh, on a call yesterday uh, with a 300 million pound turnover fresh produce company talking about um, a people talking about uh, recruitment and they've taken the view that they're looking at taking on school leavers. They're, they're very heavily <laughs> ensconced with the, the likes of Harp and Newcastle Sign uh, for placement students. They also deploy um, MDS and their view is that all of their staff, um, and, and it goes back to what our Isaac was highlighting, that it's not just staff, it is the owners of the business as well. All of their staff, all of their team are having training and development to look to, to better them better themselves. Just with um, uh, MDS, for those that aren't aware, can you just give a, a quick pricey and, and how we can find out more about M MDS so we can be involved, whether it be as a, coming on as a trainee or whether as a company, please? Yeah, um, well, look up MDS. Um, uh, in, if it's food and fresh produce, you'll find us on the website. Um, we are we recruit new intake every April, every October. We're currently recruiting cohorts of about 20 to 25 people. Uh, we have got about, so we've got 70 trainees at the moment. We've got 60 members and growing. Uh, we've now got five retailers on board, but we have growers from asparagus, strawberries, potatoes. We've got five ag chem companies. We've got an engineering business. And we put these people that we recruit into four, six months of comments, doing four completely different jobs in four completely different businesses, whilst we train them a level five apprenticeship in, in management and uh, help them understand where they fit in in the industry, what they enjoy, what they're good at. And in 35 years, we have never had anybody finish the programme and not be offered a job. So there's no guarantee of a job. They've got to earn it. But we've never had anybody leave without a job. Uh, we all say internally within the trades, Christine, I don't know if you've heard this expression before, that the person that came up with the rules for tennis was a genius. The person that came up with the scheme dynamics of MDS is a genius. They are. I don't take any credit for that. But, but what we, you know, these, these, these people that we're recruiting have to hit the ground running. They're like a mini consultant in the business. They're only there for six months. They may get two weeks notice that they're moving from Aberdeen to Basel. And they, they just get used to just, they, they support each other enormously. And I think that's partly how we get everybody through. But, uh, you know, there are headhunters like yourself refer to uh, people wanting an MDS type. An MDS type is a, is a can-do person that just picks things up and makes an impact. Yeah, but if you remember, I think it was nearly a year ago, we did a fantastic broadcast for MDS where we had some um, amazing past uh, leaders. So what's a good example? Likes of Jonathan Tremaine, CEO, CEO of Global Pacific. And, and you look at his career and he's very candid about it, that he wouldn't have got to where he was, where he's got to if it wasn't for the for the MDS scheme. Um, Christine, stay there. Lisa, can you come back in, please? Um, and it, what do you think about, um, Christine, this whole bit about collaboration, Agri-Leadership Week? Do you think the Agri-Leadership Week is going to be in a better place because the likes of your yourselves, all these, all these groups that we've got on today are collaborating? What do you think, Christine? Yeah, I, I feel I'm in a, in a wonderful position because I'm aware of all of these businesses, all of these training courses. I've spoken at a lot of them. I've been a referee for a number of people doing Nuffield. I, I think the training that we have in our industry is absolutely outstanding. Yep. And I don't think enough people know about it. 
some of these courses have been contacting me saying we've got no female applicants this year. Can you put some people forward, please? I just think it's a great that we're all working together to say we have outstanding leadership training in our industry. Get on with it. Yeah, well done. And it feels like we've got to do more. Hence why the Agri Leadership Week has, uh, has come about. Yeah. Christine, if you could just turn off your video. Lisa, hello. Hi, hello. Hi. <laughs> So, so Lisa, I understand that the Farmers Club Charitable Trust supports leadership and management development in two ways. Can you explain, please? Yeah, sure. Right. Um, right. Firstly, the Trust um, offers agricultural educator awards. Um, these are specifically designed to help those employed in agricultural education um, to widen and develop their own technical teaching and leadership skills through study acti activities either in the UK or abroad. The knowledge and experience gained is then disseminated to both students and others involved in agriculture and agricultural education sector. Um, annually, on average, there are around five recipients every year selected to receive the awards. Um, this model means there are literally thousands of people who will benefit from the knowledge gained and shared by one individual. Um, over the years, the beneficiaries from many different agricultural colleges and universities have all been great ambassadors for the Farmers Club, Farmers Club Charitable Trust and UK agriculture in general. Many have gone on to play leading roles within the industry, leading and signposting in the next generation. Um, secondly, over the past 11 years, the Trust has been instrumental in supporting 22 individuals from agriculture sector engage with the Windsor Leadership Development Trust through bursary support. Delivered in Windsor Castle, the four programmes on offer are emerging leaders, developing leaders, experienced leaders and women in leadership. Each of the programmes are designed for people at different stages of their own career journey. Anyone from the wider agricultural industry can apply the skills and knowledge gained from the programme are aimed at leading in a fast-paced global environment. Wow, and, so I bet, yeah. and, and I bet you've had some interesting projects. Uh, the, the Agriculture yeah. Ed, Ed, Educator Award, well, what sort of interesting projects have you supported, please? Well, uh, during the 40 years the Trust has been in existence, the range of project has, projects have been as diverse as share farming in New Zealand, fish farming in Japan, wow. sustainable farming in New Zealand, management of large dairy herds in the USA, improved beef production in Canada, calf health, nutrition and welfare in the USA, rewilding projects around the globe, precision arable agri-systems in the USA and UK, visits to New Zealand and the Netherlands to examine aquaculture yeah. and for mussels and kingfish, which are large mackerel apparently, um, using land-based water systems, to name just a few. It, it, well done. I'm so, so impressed. I'm, I'm just going to let on to a, a bit of a conundrum. One, one of the big agricultural universities, and I won't name them, they're a bit disappointed with the student body at the moment because the student body, they're fantastic, but they've got no international ambitions. I, I was very fortunate mm. with Harper that I did my placement year on cotton in, in Australia, and it was the absolute making um, of me. And the fact that you've got so many overseas projects, and if an individual can't be based overseas for a long period of time, but they... But a bit, we'll find out with them, with uh, with Chris, with, with nothing. If they can spend some time and just through osmosis learn um, different techniques and different experiences and, and increase their network and come back to the UK with that, that's got to be all part of their, their leadership journey. So, uh, Lisa, how significant is the work of the Farmers Club Charitable Trust in supporting the Agri Leadership Week, please? Well, um Firstly, the Trust has a strong and collaborative approach to supporting um, the agricultural colleges and universities through the Agricultural Educator Awards. Um, leadership within these settings is twofold. Um, first, firstly, directly through the development of staff and secondly, indirectly through the propagation of many of our next generation of emerging agri leaders. Um, there's a significant leadership development going on in these institutions and colleges and universities are key players in leadership and management development. The input um, of the government funded educational establishments who are our key partners cannot be underestimated in the role they play in the development of future agri leaders. Um, secondly, the Windsor Leadership Trust programme supported by the Trust has benefited many of our senior leaders in the agri industry. Um, participants are key players um, 
some are farmers and growers, others include chief execs, agri cultural entrepreneurs, veterinary professionals, feed industry, industry and specialist consultants. Fantastic. It's, it's such an oppressive organisation and, and delivery of the schemes. But hold on, we've got to look to the future now. I'm, I'm going to get out my proverbial crystal ball. So, so the, the trust has been supporting the development of leaders for over 40 years. What challenges are there going to be for the trust over the next for the next 10 to 20 years, do you think? Look into my crystal ball and, and tell me yeah. what's a, what, what you think, please. Well, leadership development through um, agricultural qualifications will play an increasingly significant part in providing the industry with the skills, knowledge and strategies that are going to be needed to meet the current and emerging global challenges that the industry faces. The here and now challenges continue to grow and become even more complex with the industry having to collectively consider the environment, economic, climate, political, supply and demand on a daily basis, raising a raising awareness of the importance of agri-leadership during this inaugural cross-organisation campaign is an excellent starting point with immense opportunities to expand the partners and stakeholders. We see our role in championing leadership through the strong links we have with Landex, the land-based colleges aspiring to excellence organisation, colleges and universities as an excellent uh, base and the pathway to provide opportunities to individuals. Our trust chairman, Stephen Fletcher, said that investing in the future by developing our current and future agri agricultural leaders has never been so imperative. So we want to work on the success of this dedicated week to en enhance our collaboration with those supporting and providing formal agricultural qualification. So the leaders of the future find their most appropriate leader, leader journey for their individual needs. Fantastic. Our, our, our training, our, our future requirements are, are safe with you, yourself, Lisa, and your colleagues. How can we find yeah. out about applying for a programme, please? Right. Well, the best place to find um, the most up to date information and the application forms uh, are on the Farmers Club Charitable Trust website. And that's um, www.tfcct.co.uk. Fantastic. Robert, could you come yeah. in, please? So, so Lisa, you, you, you believe as well that this collaboration with all of you is going to, in, instead of just one of you acting on a solo basis to promote a leadership week you're you're convinced you're positive that all of you coming together is just going to add momentum to this oh, absolutely yes there's no doubt about it that working together as a team um you know just just this broadcast today is it is it's just making people aware of the opportunities that are out there fantastic one thing i've definitely picked up over the last year of doing over 80 broadcasts on the UK on an international basis is collaboration. And we'll come on to that a little bit later. Uh, Lisa, fantastic masterclass. Uh, Robert, I've attended a number of your events over the, over the years when, when I've been allowed to, when the likes of uh, John Giles has uh, slipped me a ticket uh, to, to come in. What, what fantastic um, events. Could you give everyone a bit of an understanding if they don't know, but of course they do know, but give us a bit of an but, but being serious, actually, there's quite a few um, students that may not understand um, who the Institute of Agricultural Management are. Could you tell us, please? Well, yes, we're an institute, a membership organisation, and people can come in and be organised by us to do CPD and all sorts of stuff through our excellent administrator, Victoria Bywater. Awesome. And uh, Victoria is a font of information on all the stuff that is available and they only need to go onto the website to access it to see what we do. But I suppose our flagship sort of item is this leadership development course, which we've been running since 2002. Um, and it was actually as a result of John Allison, Professor John Allison, who was Dean of Agriculture at Sar and Sester at the time, who did a Nuffield scholarship and it was recognize at that point how little leadership development there was within the agricultural sector so the course has been run since 2002 every other year except obviously last year we had to curtail it halfway through the course because of covid well said and it's uh, it's fascinating just to see how some um, businesses organizations have here comes that word pivoted over the last year and all credit to yourself especially victoria um i've i've been 
um, I, I get a lot of your emails and the number of events, and especially some of the speakers that, that you get in are very impressive. They were impressive before, obviously, when, when we were on a face-to-face -face, uh, um, meeting basis, but you've, you've run some um, fantastic uh, webinars um, over, the, over the, the last year. So just coming to the, this, uh, and again, all credit to Victoria for, for, uh, for bossing that, for running that professionally. Just coming to the, the course again, um, who, who do you think would be most surprised applicable so we've got a whole range of people that will be watching this either live on facebook on linkedin on the podcast from the ag and the, the fresh produce sectors in the uk and internationally robert who do you think would be most applicable um to to apply to to engage in your course please right well i think this is all part of what you were so uh, it was so appropriate what we were saying about collaboration and the fact is that we're all running these courses and people can have a leadership development journey through their professional life and we, we consider ourselves to want delegates, 12 delegates every other year who are already on that leadership journey because we want to expose them to an experiential type course where they get to listen to fantastic speakers like Christine Takeon and people like that from the top of the tree who will talk about their own leadership journey. And then we learn from it. So, that, so it's very experiential. We do a week in Sirencester to start off with just basically softening them all up and getting them to work as a group. Then we go to Brussels for a week where we have been exposing them to all the EU policy makers and to our people out there, Kajika and people. And then we have a final week in Westminster where we expose wow. them to UK policy makers. But this, when we start our course again, which we're gonna do the last two weeks of in the spring next year, we intend now to spend half of our foreign week in Wagenen, uh, over in Holland as well, because yeah. we're, you know, we've got to decide whether Brussels is still as relevant as it was. So we're looking for delegates. I mean, I did the course in 2008 and I did the Worshipful Company of Farmers course in 1997. Um, so, I, you know, I see it as a sort of progression. My CPT developed, developed in that way. And we've all got courses, Windsor and everything that people can do. But a lot of it depends upon the time. Yeah. that people have got to available in their professional lives and and three weeks is quite a big ask for people but what i would say is that no one who's done our course over the last 20 years has ever regretted it and felt that it was a waste of time and uh, a lot of the strength of, as well of all these courses is the cohort that you're with and how much you learn from the other delegates and that's the same for all the courses and it's so valuable for an industry where a lot of people are inward looking in their own businesses just to talk to other people in similar positions in their businesses. It, and it's fascinating, Robert, isn't it? When you come across individuals who haven't been on these courses before, and when they do, they suddenly realise that everyone's got the same problem, but actually some of the people have worked out the solution. Um, there, there's two testimonials. There, there's, there's two key individuals who, are, who I won't name, but one is in the banking industry within agriculture, and one runs a very large farm in uh, East Anglia. Both of them went on the course uh, coincidentally at the same time. I, I met up with them some pre-pandemic pre and both of them independently said to me that the course was the making of them. It gave them the confidence that they need. That uh, in individual within the banking industry has gone on to soar. That individual within the farming community, that farm was was just ticking over. You should, Robert, you should see what they're doing now. And, and the catalyst was absolutely because of your course and because what they learned. And the other bit, I just want to mention it as Robert stated, and I'll be a bit, bit more glib about it, that 50% um, of what you learn on these courses, you learn at the bar. It is actually with your cohort, picking up with them and they become lifelong friends. And just to reiterate that, that um, scenario again, everyone has got the same problem. Everyone has encountered the problem that you've had, whether it be on a farming or on a domestic basis. And they're all there to help with these courses because if they're engaging in these courses, they want to help you and they want to help themselves. So get engaged. Uh, Robert, stay there. Karen, come on in, because that's a, a great um, segue to bring you, you in, Karen, about the, the Worshipful Company of, uh, of uh, Farmers. Um, so Karen, it's great that Robert did, uh, did your course back, at, back in the 90s. Yeah, it's a very good course to start with. Was it the advanced course that you did, Robert? Yeah, we did it, in those days, we did it over in Y College, Karen. Oh, the advanced, advanced course before it went to Sirencester. Yeah, well, we're on our 70th course now. So there's over 1,200 people been through that course. It started in 63. So um, 
and still going very strong. Can, can I just say, uh, Thomas says it's brilliant, but there are other universities available, as they, as they there say. There are the other universities available. Just I've got to, got to live, live my half a page. Robert, if you could just turn off your, your video. So, so Karen, we, we need a, a bit of a pre-see um, in the respect of, it's a bit of a duplication as to the fantastic broadcast you did with myself and Christine, Women in Food and Farming. Tell us everything about the Worshipful Company of Farmers. Go! Everything? What? You don't want all that again? No, well, not, not the history from the 16th century, perhaps. No, no, OK. Well, we became a livery company in 1952, and we're there to promote leadership and management uh, within, within agriculture. And, that, and the educational courses are what we're really all about. And we started with the advanced course way back in 1963. And as I said, we're on our 70th, 70th course now. But we've also got, we then found that there was a gap for more leadership course and the challenge of rural leadership was started 25 years ago. So that's just coming up its 25 course as well. So we found out on this previous broadcast and, and I do ask you to just uh, Google Beanstalk Global uh, Karen. It will, it will come up with the, with the repeat of that um, of that broadcast. So you can listen to it on YouTube or on well, the do you want Do you want the story about why we how we got the livery company? No, 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 it's, no. It's, it's fine. Before, but they, they can, everyone can watch that on that, uh, on that catch up. Um, Karen, who do you think is, would be most applicable um, to come and engage uh, with you for the Worshipful Company of Farmers courses? Who would you like, like to come in to, to talk to you, please? Who would like to engage on it? Yep. The delegates? Yep. Well, absolutely anybody. A lot of people have been, been to college or university. They've come back home or in a business and they sort of, Get to get to a level and they need to push themselves forward and go and take themselves out of their comfort zone so it's applicable to anybody who just wants to improve where they are and you, you, it takes a big people want to come and do these courses but they have to take a leap of faith and think right well we're going to sign up for this they, they like the challenge of raw leadership there's no curriculum people say you should go it'll change your life just have faith um and they go and we have people from all sorts. So we have people involved with business, uh, far, farmer, farm, farmer sons, farm managers, people from the NFU, CLA, rural charter surveyors, a whole host of people. And so for example, the challenge of rural leadership, they all get down there on a Sunday and they are fully immersed for a fortnight. Um, they, they, they start at about eight in the morning and there's no time to, to be, uh, ringing home because you're involved right until you go to the bar about 10 o'clock. As you say, the bar is very important because they all chat along and they have case studies to do. They're taken right out of their comfort zone and they just learn so much. And they find that everybody wants to learn. You know, they're, they're mixing with like-minded people. And then they go back home and they bring so many changes to themselves and to their business. It is personal development and their business development. And um, I, I put, I've got two sons. Well, two, I've got three sons. Two of them have done the advanced course and two of them have done the Nuffield. And I went and did a Windsor Leadership course about three years ago. So that took me right out of my comfort zone. And it was suggested that I should go and do it. And I thought, oh, what do I, I'm jogging along here quite nicely. And I got there, there were 18 of us. And um, I was older than anybody else by 20 years. We had somebody who was from the RAF based in the Pentagon. We had leading army people. And my badge just said Karen Mercy Hill Farm. And um, I thought, right, I'm going to stay underneath the radar here. But you can't do that. And they actually bring everything out of you that they possibly can. And it's just such a brilliant experience. So there's so many courses out there. And we're all at different stages of our career. So there's a time and a place for each one, but you'll know when you're ready to push yourself and go on to the next level. Fantastic. And I'm just going to get, I'm about to go on to a testimonial from Emily Norton, um, Head of Rural Development at, uh, at Savills. But can you just show off about your nephew and uh, the, the event that you've hopefully got coming up with him later this year? Because I love that. Uh, Robbie, yep. my nephew. Yep. Yes, he's, uh, he's actually MP now for uh, Ilkley and Keithley, and he's hosting an event for the Worshipful Company of Farmers at the House of Commons and the House of Lords, and then we're going to have a speaker panel afterwards. So, yeah, very proud of him. So, Fantastic. yeah, it was in, when we were all, all campaigning in, in Ilkley and Keithley for him. Uh, that was that was a good few days. That was Excellent. going around knocking on doors. I, I, thank you. I, I love that. So the first time round, it's even better the second time round. 
Um, so Emily Norton, if it's okay to to name check um, Emily on our previous broadcast with Karen, um, Emily did did the course. Um, and uh, they, they said to Emily, uh, Karen, you might have to have, have to help me here with the exact details, but they told um, Emily, right, you're all fired up, get home back to the family farm, back to the family business, just take six months, just to see how things are going to settle up, then start to implement your changes. So she finished the course on a Friday, on the Saturday, she started to implement the changes and that business has never looked back. And as she stated, she was uh, not in the best, best, best place, uh, place when she looked to uh, go on that course. And it changed her it metamorphosized her into a far better person in respect of uh, the family business and it was also coincidentally it helped her with her future development and then uh, gaining a, a very senior role with uh, with Savills all because of Karen's course all because yeah. of the yeah Western company you program. are told to stop and think before you go and do anything drastic but quite a lot I've done the course and I think right it's now I'm ready for this let's go and the advanced course I mean that's brilliant too and so they both have both have a part to play the challenge for leadership and the advanced course in agricultural management. Excellent. Karen, stay there. Chris, could you come back in? Um, Karen, have you got a tie for the Washable Company of, uh, of, uh, of Farmers, like Chris has for the Nuffield Scholarship? Oh, they, they, have a t they have ties. And we also, all the people that go on our courses, there's now an alumni association, which is brilliant. And we have a learning extension day at Cranfield every year. So we, we go and we have a day of, of brilliant speakers, just like we do on all the courses. Yep. and a dinner at night and so you're getting people who've been on the courses many many years ago not just the, the new delegates uh but yeah it's great okay but do you have a tie like chris we, we all have ties yes oh, okay <laughs> just checking just checking yeah. out check, check it out the merch just i have a head scarf a, a scarf thing but i don't actually use it very often i have to say but, but uh, Karen, thank you karen if you could turn off your video thank uh, you uh, uh, Chris, Nuffield, I, I was saying about how my best man uh, did Nuffield. Um, I was at um, Harper with, uh, with this particular individual and he went to Sirencester. Can you believe it, Chris? He went to Sirencester to, to top up, to do a management course. And, and the reason he did that was because he then wanted to have it on his CV that he'd been at Harper, he'd been at Sirencester, he'd run various farms to hopefully get, get a, a Nuffield scholarship. And he did. And he, and he traveled the world um, investigating uh, the apple sector. Um, Chris, for those that aren't fully aware, I, I know you gave us a, a fantastic um, pricey earlier, but could you just uh, uh, give, give us, a, in, in your own words, uh, the, the nuts and bolts of, uh, of Nuffield and, and why people should look to engage with the, with, with the course and what it can do for them, please? Well, um, the, the first thing I would say is um, just a number of names that were mentioned uh, over the last half hour who are Nuffield scholars, you know, whether it's Robbie Moore or whether it's Emily Norton, whether it's Wynne Jones, Louise Manning, um, gives, gives you a, a, a flavour of, yeah. of um, um, where, where some of what we do comes from. And, and I think the, the key difference is, um, and we all, work to, we all work very well together in conjunction. And, and um, to give you an example of that, um, Christine Taken was talking about MDS. And, and um, I do remember being, um, having been at the time a member of the, one of the business who set MDS up. Wow. Um, the 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 um, the efforts we made in order to find the money to employ somebody, and indeed between ourselves as individual businesses, to accept that uh, people were going around various businesses uh, as trainees because we we really did see the need and what how that has grown. It's it's fabulous, um, really 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 good. Our our slot is is is. In, if you like, to some extent, in the middle of all this, where um, you get to a stage in your career, and I speak from my own experience, if you like, where it, it's time to take stock, it's time to look at something new, it's it's time to to uh, broaden your horizon, and and if if you are lucky to get a scholarship, then you you basically take ten eight to ten weeks out, um, and it's almost like a, an industrial sabbatical. Because yep. you can immerse yourself into in, into the subject you want to study, and the subject is for you. And along the way, you you um, certainly I did. You you have what what we call light bulb moments. Fantastic. Completely yeah. out of the out of the context of what you might have been studying, but it's it's a life lesson which you suddenly pick up by meeting somebody, and and uh, Nuffield provides the the funds for that and the the if you like the. The framework in, in which that is set, this the worldwide alumni 
uh, with, with over 11 countries now fully involved, 70 international scholars every year. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the network that's built up over those years, the Contemporary Scholars Conference, where all the worldwide scholars meet for a week, which by the way, will be in, in, in Norwich next year, okay. um, for a week to learn from each other, to ne network with each other and to listen to other people. Um, and and um, we're, we're doing some of it in conjunction with Norwich Research Park, for example. And, and that is, um, it, it's if you like, getting you out of the box of the day to day, thinking about something new, having time to for yourself, um, putting the smartphone aside and really thinking something through and having the time and the, the training back up with it for, you know, we do a bit of public speaking training, we do how to write reports and so on and so forth. And the great thing is it's open to everybody. All you have to be, you have to be in a job and had some experience post, um, post college or post whatever, you know, and, and now the people who've left school, or scholars left school at 15 um, and never had much formal education since then, that's, that's fine. They've got a good scheme, that's great. There's a lovely saying that I like to use that I saw on a trip through Africa and a, in a, 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 I was very privileged to stay in a fantastic household and they uh, were a big, great business. And on the kitchen door, on the way out, it said life begins at the end of your comfort zone. I don't know about you, you Chris, but I meet a, a number of people, um, especially of the sort of 30, 40, 50 year age group, saying, well, I've done as much as I can. I'm, I'm just in, in my job within agriculture now. What more can I learn? Crikey, uh, for, for them to go into to Nuffield, and if they and this 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 excuse that you must hear time and time again, Chris, oh, I can't take the time out of the business. It, it, it's not you. You cannot but take the time out of the business uh, because you're going to better your better yourself. And as we both know, we all know that the graveyard is full of irreplaceable people. You need to take that time out for the likes of Chris's course, Nuffield Scholarship, or any other any of the other courses to better yourself and um, and your and your business. So, so Chris, if, if you're meeting that issue that the, the classic conundrum is, is the farmer and, uh, and son, the son wants to progress, uh, but um, uh, the, the family don't want him to, how, how can you persuade them to allow that son to take but six weeks out of the business and not milk the cows or, or tend after the wheat? What would your answer be, please? Well, that uh, is, is, um, is, of course, a difficult one because uh, circumstances um, are, are different in, 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 in every business. But uh, um, it, it does say, take some strength of character to make that decision um, and, and follow it through. And um, all I would encourage is whether at the time when you're thinking about this, you, you're interested in, in doing it, you might get support from the family or not, have a go at trying and, and uh, then go from there. Um, it, it, I would argue that being an office scholar is, should be sufficient accolade for the family to understand and say, really, well, he's gained enough with scholarship. Well, good luck and let's see what he comes back with. Well, well said. And uh, I've slightly led you into my, my trap. Uh, my uh, best man that he went to Harper and uh, Sarcester and uh, did the Nuffield course, he has been to, I think he last told me about half a dozen uh, kitchen tables to have that conversation directly with the uh, families who didn't uh, didn't want to let go or were hesitant for son or daughter to go off and they all went and they've all joined Nuffield over, over the last 10 years so so the the peer pressure is also a good way of uh, of, of forcing that uh, a, a positive uh, to, to that uh, potential negative Chris uh, fantastic how do we find out more about Nuffield how, how do we find out um, if, if you're applicable the right age group how do we find out how to join please well we we have um we, we've just introduced a new website which is um, I think brilliant. very exciting yeah. Uh, and it's www.nuffieldscholar.org. Uh, and it's got everything on there. It's got lots of uh, YouTube videos you can go into. You've got reports, you've got everything, you've got the, how, you, how to apply and so on. And it, it just also um, social media, um, get involved. Excellent. Chris, well done. Can everyone come back in please? Um, and Chris, I'm just gonna ask a question of, um, of everyone. I'll just start with you as, a, as a, everyone piles back in. Um, LMD, as um, Isaac was saying earlier, leadership management development. Um, what, how do you think by collaborating we can make leadership management development more normal in agriculture? Chris, what do you think? How can we get this to be the, not, not a thing that we're trying to force people to do? We're not trying to get them to force. How, how can we get this to be just the norm? What do you think, Chris? 
Well, leadership is never ending. It's, it's a life journey. You might be leading in your upper team uh, when you when you were school, and you develop from there. You might not be leading in your upper team, but you have a reason to, to want to have to become a leader because of circumstance later on in your life, and then maybe at any stage. And and if you like, the, the great thing of us getting together is is that we've actually got a, a whole theme that goes all the way through. Nothing is the same. And you can gain much from every course, whether you're an Alfred scholar, whether you do MDS, whether you worship, do for, worship a company of farmers and so on. Well said. Robert, same question to you. How can we make leadership management development the norm in our sectors? Well, I think I think really we've got to tap into all those very successful people within the industry who've who've done these courses and prevailed. And nowadays, with sort of modern communication, etc., it should be easier than ever to get some of their life stories back into the domain. And particularly now, where uh, agriculture is facing such an uncertain future, we need to be communicating with each other, both farmers communicating with each other but also our courses communicating with each other so that we can all benefit from each other's courses and and get the people but it's always been a struggle to get people to attend the training for the very reasons that Christoph was talking because the the problem is the day-to-day -day management of our businesses at the moment in a period of time where we've probably got less staff than ever before it's a very difficult conundrum but we, we will overcome it and we've had great success with all these courses and I think I think the message is getting through but it, it's just a drip 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 to try and uh, move it in the right direction. Robert well said. Karen what's your view please how can we make uh, leadership management development the norm? Well let's just hope we can kick start it a bit next week with the leadership week and get people talking about it and showcase different people you know the videos and everything and let's people see what others can do and inspire them to do it. I mean, it, it, the, the question is, why wouldn't you yeah. go and do a leadership course? And uh, there's so many people to look up to that have done it. And I did forget to say that uh, my, my nephew, Robbie Moore, he has done enough field as well. So oh, really? sorry about that, Chris. <laughs> uh, but yes, just all talking, all the, all the course providers talking and promoting it. And there's great webinars going on. Yeah. Just just log on and look out, look and see what people are doing and you can do it as well. Fantastic. Lisa, I do apologize if I, if I cut you off in, in your in your prime video wise. Um, if you got <laughs> if you got the if you got the question, um, leadership and management development. Well, I, th I think Karen's answer is, is fantastic. Why wouldn't you do a leadership training course? Lisa, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's absolutely vital. The, the, the world is changing so rapidly and agriculture is changing so rapidly that we need to be ahead of the ahead of the curve and um, have everybody, you know, learn and develop as, as much as we possibly can. Fantastic, Christine. Come on, why why should we? Why how could we persuade people to do these leadership courses with the likes of MDS and the, the rest of our colleagues on this uh, on this broadcast? Well, my, my background is not the agricultural industry. It was engineering and then fast moving consumer goods. There in those industries, and I'm a chartered engineer. Yeah. Yeah, continual professional development is essential for anybody in that qualification. You wouldn't want your GP or your dentist not to be doing continual professional development. And I don't think we've really got that into our heads in our industry. We are so technologically advanced nowadays. There's so much we have to deliver for the public that we have to keep training and developing ourselves. And I'm horrified the number of times I ask people, what was your most recent training? And I can tell you, I put money on it every time. They'll say health and safety. Yes, of course that's important, but leadership is just another dimension. And I, well, nobody has actually said that almost all of these organizations that are represented here today have helped people find the money. You have to find the time, but they will often help you find the money to go on the course. There are numerous agricultural charities uh, that, that are available. They will point you to them. You have to win it. You have to earn it. But funds will not be the reason that you don't get to do a leadership course. And uh, hopefully we'll get all of those messages across next week. Fantastic. Isaac, you did a great presentation earlier um, by, by yourself, by your colleagues and, and the great team at Promar. What, what's your takeaway from hearing uh, from Chris, from Robert, from Karen, from Lisa, from, from Christine, please? Um, 
listen, I'm, I'm definitely not one to knock a very good night in the bar and never undervalue the, uh, um, the lessons you can learn in a bar. But I think in this uh, day and age that we live in the fast-paced society, I think so one of those uh, recommendations that I mentioned to make it more accessible, move to blended, I think that you know, uh, uh, all of these courses have got a, a place and, and are brilliant courses, but I think those smaller bite-sized things that people, when you need something on that specific area of leadership or that specific area of management, more of those bite-sized, uh, easy, accessible um parts i think and will play a big uh, role in the future um so yeah i think so that that's one of the things we should all be be working at on and, and looking at isaac fantastic thank you and everyone just to summarize collaboration I, I think probably the best example is chris actually chris with your brilliant example of uh, some of your uh, colleagues that you did nuffield with crikey look at what you went out and did in in eastern europe uh, when I was in the grain trade back back in the day and I came up into East Anglia and I had a, a thiefdom of about 150 farmers, I, I remember my boss at the time saying, the problem with farmers is that they don't collaborate. If they collaborated, they'd be so much more efficient and so much more progressive. I think we're beyond that now. What Christine said earlier about other industries, especially the likes of engineering, where the, the, the learning development is is in front of us, but by crikey, with the likes of every, everyone here, Nuffield, AHDB, Institute of Agricultural Management, Worshipful Company of Farmers, the Farmers Club Charitable Trust. Um, and I, I did tell you, everyone, I've got two other trade organisations um, uh, bemoaning that they weren't on this course, uh, on this broadcast, because they wanted to, uh, to, to, to have their five minutes as well to sell the, their courses. So it's great that we're collaborating on this. Um, Isaac, just to summarise for us, Agri Leadership Week, how do we find out more about it? So look at an online, it's an Agri Leadership Week. Um, you can uh, look for the hashtag uh, on Twitter. It's going to be everywhere. You're going to struggle to miss it. Excellent. So everyone, um, hashtag Agri, Agri Leadership Week. So everyone, what does success look like if you deploy fantastic training? Come on, let's start with Karen, just to summarise for us. If... <clears throat> You take a leadership course, you will grow, your business will grow, and all those that you're involved with will grow to make everything a success. Who? Lisa? I think it's, it's, it's having the skills to take everybody along with you to, um, to apply everything to make the business successful. Fantastic. Chris? Well, it will change your life, and you learn to delegate. Boom. Robert? Yes, I agree with Chris. It will change your life. These courses are life changing and people never regret being on them. And, and so it's just crazy not to do it. Christine. I've come at the end. All I just have to go back to say what someone said before. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, well, <laughs> Isaac, I think I think everyone's knocked it out of the park today. What do you think? I think so. Success for me would be in a much bigger uh, number of people and going through different courses and different programs and different learning modules and finding that balance between leading yourself, leading your business and leading your team. And, and I really like that um, quote of you don't need a title to be a leader. So don't be put off. Well, well said. So hashtag Agri Leadership Week, 17th to 21st of May 2021. It's not for a week. It's for the rest of your life. Sign up. Get involved with all of these fantastic individuals here. L look at their websites. Uh, look at them at LinkedIn. They're all here to help. Everyone, thank you very much for this broadcast today. It's been amazing. You look after yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Bye. 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 Bye